Hey guys, happy new year first of all. I hope this year is great for everyone. So yeah, um, I got this request a while ago to do a tutorial on how to produce your files to get ready for printing when you're making acrylic charms. If you were in the same situation as me when I first started making my charms then you may find it is a little tricky to understand the instructions that the printing company gives you. Um, SAP Creatives I found a little confusing but that's because I probably overthink everything. <laughs> but I thought I would make a video tutorial anyways just to help you guys. So first of all we're going to go into step one which is the artwork layer. So if you are getting your charms printed with SAP Creatives then you will notice you have artwork A and artwork B. The difference between the two is that if you are doing double sided charms then you will need to pay attention to both artwork A and artwork B but if you are doing single sided then artwork B just won't apply to you whatsoever so you can just not touch that layer at all and hide it. This is what my finished product will look like before I send it off to the printers. I also need to say that I am creating a clear charm, so this isn't going to be like glow in the dark or old school white ones which they do, but this is transparent, clear, so some of the instructions may differ, but I will try my best to describe everything as I go along. So I'm going to use a previous design I did last year to show you guys the difference between the layers and what each layer actually means. So we're going to start off with the charm. So this is my charm I did of 707 from Mystic Messenger. I have um, the speed paint up if you guys are interested in seeing it. And I'm going to start off by trying to explain what the whole template is and what the loop template is and the differences between it. So as you can see, I already have the loop set on the design. The loop basically creates a loop around your artwork and it connects to the actual acrylic. So a better way to describe this is the darker part is going to be the hull. So this hull is where you can attach like things like phone straps and anything else you want to connect your charm to. The lighter blue is going to be whatever material your acrylic charm is printed on. So if you print your stuff from SAP or if you're looking to print your stuff from SAP, you'll know that they have different acrylic types. They've got clear, glow in the dark, glitter, they've got the classic white and so on. The so lighter blue is just basically going to be that acrylic material and nothing more. And the whole template is the exact opposite. It creates the hole and nothing else. So this blue dotted line around, nothing will print here. No extra acrylic, nothing. It's just a hole. So if you wanted to create a loop like I just explained, using the whole template like this won't do anything. It probably wouldn't even print anything. You'd want to place the hole within your template. You can actually still do the same thing by attaching jump rings or phone straps or anything by placing this whole template a little bit further into your charm but again it probably won't look as nice because you're basically just putting a hole in your charm unless that's what you're aiming for. So I am placing my loop here at the top. Artwork A is what you want to use for the front of your charm. I am actually doing a single sided charm here so I don't need to pay attention to artwork B but I will still explain it to you. So artwork A, once you've imported your charm, you want to transform this by flipping it horizontally. If you read the instructions on the SAP creatives it will mention that you do need to flip your charm. If you do not flip your charm basically when it prints it will print flipped anyway so say if you had writing on your charm and for this example I'll just put hello and you wanted it to be printed like that hello you'd have to flip it so that it's completely reversed otherwise it will print like this if that makes sense so if you flip it it will print like this if you don't flip it it will print like this which you don't want so make sure you always flip your charms even if you don't have writing on it flip your charms some artwork I know that if you flip your artwork sometimes it will look absolutely dreadful like mine does normally <laughs> but if you flip it 
it's fine it will print like how you've saved it as it will print normally it will print unflipped yeah so don't worry about that just flip your designs anyway make sure you don't forget to do that i've forgotten to do that before and it didn't turn out that great so yeah flip your design so i'm going to move on to artwork b again if you are just printing single-sided charms ignore this step completely so if you're doing double-sided charms you'll want to also fill out artwork b so artwork a is kind of like the front of the charm and artwork b is the back of the charm so enable the artwork b and you basically want to copy your design and paste it down and then line it up to the design so that it completely masks artwork a the difference between artwork A and what artwork B is that you do not flip this layer. Artwork A should be flipped, but artwork B should not be flipped. I hope that makes sense. Think of it like a mirror. One side's flipped and the other side kind of isn't because the other side's you in a way. So artwork A is the other side of the mirror, whilst artwork B is the person looking into the mirror. I hope that also makes sense. <laughs> So if you're wondering what the white area is, I'm going to first off explain that you can actually include the white area whether you're printing single sided charms or double sided charms. Um, it's not compulsory but I will say that it, you probably would want to include it into your design for the reasons that the white area makes your image much more crisp, all the lines are much more crisp, everything's more vivid and vibrant and it just adds life to your charm more than if you weren't going to apply the white area so what is the white area exactly how does it like change the artwork basically say if I were doing single sided charms artwork A would be the front of the charm so what you see on my screen now will be the charm itself at the front and if I were to flip the single sided charm over there will be a white layer at the back and it will basically be the charm itself but just completely white but if you are doing double sided charms you will not see the white at all whether you flip it or not you won't see any white because the white will be printed underneath the design and that's what's going to make it more vibrant and crisp and everything so when you're doing the white area you will want to select your design like here i just press Control and the artwork layer and you'll have the artwork selected You'll then want to go to the white area and choose this blue colour. Um, if you're unsure what the colour you need is, I will put the code in the description. Or you can also go onto the set creatives tutorial, which I will also link and copy the colour. So after you've selected the piece and chosen the colour, you'll just want to paste it onto the design. So when you hide artwork A and artwork B, it will look like this, just a block of blue. That's it, that's basically it. You don't have to flip it or anything, it just needs to match your artwork, like so. And that's the white area. Make sure all of your layers are named as well. So we've got artwork A, artwork B, and the white area. Ignore the office use only, that's basically the template and what they're going to be using to print off. Next is the gloss varnish. If you want your charms to have a matte finish, ignore this layer, just leave it blank. But if you want your charms to be glossy instead, you want to use this layer. To do so, select your design again, go onto the gloss varnish layer, select black and paste it over the layer. So it should just be a black block. Next is the cut area. Okay, so if you're wondering what the cut area is, basically when you get your charms printed, you can decide whether or not you actually want the clear acrylic charm around it to be visible. The bigger the width of the cut area, the more of the acrylic that will be printed. If you want to do this then, you basically have to, again, select your design, go to select, modify, expand, 
and you can then decide to expand by how many pixels you want. You can just experiment at the start to have a look and then you'll want to go onto the cut area and fill this in in black as well. And that's basically the cut area. Here I've lowered the opacity of the cut area so this black part, this outline, will be clear acrylic. And then this part will be the design. I should also mention this part here around the loop should also be clear acrylic, but you don't need to color that or do anything. That's basically what the loop template's for. So make sure all of your layers are on 100% opacity and all of the ones that you want to be visible are visible. So before you send this in, if you know that you're done, you also want to just double check to make sure everything is right. All of your layers should align perfectly. If they do not, you might need to flip them. If they're not aligned perfectly, you need to do this, otherwise your charm isn't going to be printed out well. So artwork A is the flipped one, the front of the charm. Artwork B is at the back, this is not flipped but this still aligns because artwork A is flipped. The gloss varnish aligns perfectly as you can tell. The white area also aligns. The cut area aligns but the border is expanded. And then you have the loop template. You can place the loop template wherever you want the hole and the loop to be. I place it on the top of my charm. And that's basically it. So when you save your charm, you want to save it. All of your layers should be visible, check through thoroughly, and basically that's it. So don't worry if it looks black, they'll just go through the layers and they'll print anyway. And it will be printed like this. And then follow the instructions for naming your charm. I have to name mine my first and last name, underscore clear, because that is the type of acrylic I'm printing on, underscore charm and then the number I have um, ordered so in this batch I did like five different designs so this was number four and then the Photoshop you have to send this as the Photoshop or the illustrator document nothing else if you're still worried that your charms might mess up or something don't worry I still do this sometimes you can actually ask for a sample print out of your charm just to make sure and double check everything's all right if you want to know more details then here is the tutorial I will link this in the description by Sat Creatives and it basically goes through everything from downloading the templates to understanding each layer the loop layer the whole layer importing the artwork all the layers basically you can also do spot to gloss varnish if you are into that sort of stuff and cut lines so at the end is a submission checklist so and this is also how you should save your artwork and you then email your artwork to info at sapcreatives.com with your order number they've also got a visual setup guide which i will also link and this basically better explains their tutorial so if you're still confused you can check that out as well so i hope you found this tutorial helpful i will link everything you need to know within the description as well as all the tutorials that sap have done themselves and yeah if you have any questions please leave them down in the comments and i'll see you in my next video